You're listening to the Astrology Hub Podcast, practical wisdom for living your life on purpose. Hi there and welcome. My name is Amanda Poole Walsh and I'm the founder of Astrology Hub and I'm here with astrologer and senior editor Donna Woodwell. And today we have a really special episode for you designed to help you tune into the magic of the winter solstice and really the magic of life. <laughs> but before we do that, I just wanted to remind you about last week's episode with the one and only astrological wizard, Rick Levine. It was super fun and enlightening conversation about astrology, consciousness, and common misconceptions people have about astrology. So if you missed that episode, make sure and go back and check that one out. For today's episode, Donna and I sat down with Carolyn Elliott, PhD. She is the founder of Witch Magazine, the Teacher of Influence, the life-altering course on mastering practical magic, and the author of Awaken Your Genius and Existential Kink. And we talked about practical ways to bring magic into your daily life, why this is so important, like why would you actually want to do that, um, and how it helps you connect with a sense of meaning, playfulness, and creativity in your everyday reality. And then we gave some great ideas for ways you can ritualize and really infuse meaning into your winter solstice. And I walked away from this conversation feeling so happy and light and just joyful, really. It just, it's just a really amazing conversation that we had. Donna, what was your favorite part of the little gathering? I think of it as like a little, it was like a little party or gathering that we had with Carolyn. What was your favorite part? The Mad Hatter's Tea Party with the true Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> exactly what it was. I, I was. I was so inspired by the way she moves through her world. For her, everything becomes a part of the sacred process. And I, if, if we could have tea with Carolyn, I would be at her doorstep at least once a week. Oh my gosh, me too. Me too. And I basically invited myself to her winter solstice party that she's having because it sounds like so much fun. My favorite part was the like really tangible suggestions that both you and Carolyn gave for making this winter solstice really, really special. And I love that there were suggestions for those of you who want to have a more solitary experience. So you want it to be a more of an inward journey. And for those of you who want to share um, with others, with loved ones, there's great suggestions there too. And I always crave this, like this ideal of these, these gatherings that where people would come together and actually do fun things together, you know, like games and songs. And so there's so many great suggestions from Carolyn, um, for ways that you can really make this time fun and festive, but also really, really meaningful and connected. All right. So before we dive in, I just wanted to take a moment to address some of the words and terms that we use because there's a lot of different ways to interpret them. So let's start with the term magic. And Donna, I'm, I'm hoping that you can address this one. So for those who might be out there and a little bit turned off by the term magic, thinking that it's like ungrounded or not real, how, how would you define magic and address the conception that it's, it's not really actually something that's useful? Wow. I can't imagine a world without magic. It would seem so flat and every step would feel heavy. You know, magic is all around us. It is, it's that spark that connects us into the creative process. So at least in my tradition, magic is every time you fall in love and every time you get into the flow and feel like you and the universe are dancing together to create something amazing and we call it magic. And yes, there are some formal things that you can learn on how to tap into that co-creative process in the ways that have traditionally done, but essentially it becomes how you create consciously in the world. You know, Donna, what you just said made me think of, of one of the reasons why a lot of us have lost our belief in magic. I think that, you know, you talked about falling in love. And there's this, there's this conception out there that the falling in love part, the romantic part is actually not real. And then like everything comes crashing down to earth and then that's real. You know, that's when you see like the real person and you get into the real relationship. So, and I think the same thing happens with children, like even around Christmas, you know, there's like, there's all this magic and there's, 
these, you know, this, this generosity, but then it all comes crashing down to earth when you realize, oh, it's, it's mom and dad, you know? So, and that's the secret to magic. I'll give you all a secret here. It's cultivating that sense of childlike wonder in everything that you do. I mean, I remember when I drove across the Golden Gate Bridge for the first time and I was like, oh my God, I'm on the Golden Gate Bridge. I can't believe I'm here because I'd seen it on television forever. And I allowed myself to have that childlike wonder because that's where magic comes from. All things become possible when you imagine that they can be possible. So it's connecting with that part of ourselves and realizing that it never went anywhere. It's just been kind of um, buried. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. How about the term ritual? We talk about rituals you can do around the solstice. And, you know, on this podcast, we talk about rituals you can do around the new moon and full moon and all these things. And for some people, ritual either has a really heavy religious connotation and or a really dark connotation where it's like, oh, wow, you know, you you think of like human sacrifice and, and dark magic and things like that. So what is ritual to you? How would you describe it? Ritual is when you consciously do something again and again in order to create a path to the sacred or the spirit. And I know that sounds oversimplified, but once you approach ritual that way, you realize that your morning rituals of getting up and getting out of bed and brushing your teeth and your evening rituals of sitting down to read a book or tuck yourself into bed or do your yoga, whatever else you do, um, once you approach them consciously as how am I using my time well, how am I using my resources well and dedicating them to something bigger than just um, a whim of that moment, um, it can become a very powerful tool to align everything that you do on your path. It's also a marker in time. Like I feel like you know it's so easy to slip into unconsciousness. I don't care how um, enlightened you know people pretend to be or are. Actually, there's always those moments of unconsciousness where we're not fully aware and present in in the moment. So I, I the way that I see ritual helping so much is it helps us bring our attention into that moment and infuse it with meaning and and that level of awareness that just taps us into what's there all the time, but that we, we just can't see. So it is this, like you said, a, a conduit or a pathway to spirit, also a conduit or a pathway to magic. So for any of you out there who, who are like disillusioned by the holidays and just kind of over it because you, you can't connect with what it stands for, for the majority of our society anymore. I really think this episode is going to help you reconnect and bring that magic back in, bring and and make it yours, you know, bring the meaning and the sacredness into this time of year, because there really is magic all around us all the time. And during this time of year, it can be an even, an even easier time to tune into it. And we actually address that on this episode as well. So hope you enjoy it. And we will connect with you again after the interview is done. Carolyn, it is fabulous to have you here with us today. I am I'm basically like a fangirl. I love you and your work. You're so amazing. You're bringing so much beauty to so many people's lives. And I just want to thank you for that. Thank you, Amanda. It's a pleasure to be here. And today we are here talking about the winter solstice. The winter solstice is tomorrow. But whether or not you're listening to this episode right before the solstice, on the solstice, or sometime in the middle of the year, it doesn't really matter because there's always going to be another winter solstice for you to celebrate. Um, So Carolyn, let's talk about the magic of the winter solstice and what it actually means for you. Sure. So what it actually means to me is the time of the year when dreaming is stronger than our external actions in the waking world. So hibernation, darkness, turning inward. So I love to use the winter solstice time um, as a time to reflect, as a time to read through old journals, as a time to focus, especially on recording my dreams and noticing what comes up, as a time to do divinations. And in terms of group celebrations, I love having a big bonfire on the winter solstice. That's a great idea. Donna, can you bring in the astrological significance of the solstice for us? 
Sure. Well, the solstices and the equinoxes are the four anchor points of the astrological year. So when we are at the summer solstice, for example, the sun is high up in the northern hemisphere, and we have the longest days of the year in the northern hemisphere, and conversely, the shortest days in the southern hemisphere, because the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere is the winter solstice in the, in the southern hemisphere. So what you get is this seesawing back and forth between light and darkness, where one part of the planet is experiencing full light and the other part is going into sleep. It really catches the, the polarity of the duality of the dance between the two across our whole planet. And so for me, there's a deep connection between those elements of light and dark, finding the light in the dark and the dark in the light that I think um, when you're following a path like Carolyn, it's something that you'd have a lot to say about. <laughs> yes, uh, certainly. So a lot of the work that I do involves shadow integration, taking a look at um, the underbelly of my own psyche and personality and working with it to accept it, to embrace it. Um, so the winter solstice being the time of year where I live um, in the Northern Hemisphere, like Donna was just saying, that is the darkest time is the time when the shadows are strongest, when the unconscious is strongest. And it's actually very easy to access. So a lot of us think of um, Halloween time or Samhain as a time when, you know, the veil is thinnest. And I agree that that's certainly true as the vegetation is just dying. There's certainly that thin membrane between life and death. But I think the membrane between life and the world of the unseen um, becomes even thinner at winter solstice in some ways, which is why ghost stories have always been so popular, like um, A Christmas Carol and um, stories like oh, It's a Wonderful Life, where somebody is imagining what their community would be like without them in it and experiencing that reflection. So I think it's an amazing time to really go deep into fantasy and imagination and into the really more epic and romantic stories. What do you think that would do for people, Carolyn, if, the, if they take the time to do things like that right now? Sure. Well, it's sort of like what Thomas More talked about in Care of the Soul, where if we don't take the time to really nurture, feed, pay attention to this part of ourself that's not really that practical, <laughs> that's interested in um, all of these far out imaginary speculations, um, then we don't get fresh ideas. We're not able to be creative in other parts of the year when it is time for the outward action. Um, one second, my cat is crying at the door to be let out. So you were talking about the care of the soul and how then we can access that when we need it. Can you keep going with that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So if we just sort of barrel through this season, which is very tempting to do, there's so much in terms of shopping and celebrations and everything that you can keep yourself busy with. You don't really give yourself the time to rest, reflect, to dream, to fantasize, to watch a marathon of the Lord of the Rings movies or the Harry Potter movies, which I love to do <laughs> around that time of the year. You don't, when you do that, you're not um, feeding your mythical imagination. And I think it's really important that we understand our lives in mythopoetic terms. You know, each of us is a character in an unfolding, unique drama, hopefully a comedy, um, <laughs> and not a tragedy. I guess it all depends on which way you look at it. But um, if we think of ourselves in purely mundane terms and, you know, just paying the bills and, uh, you know, what other people think of us, so on, you know, that's a necessary way to operate as an adult. But if that's our only way, then there's a danger that um, our lives can lose meaning because meaning really does come from connection with our ancestors and from the rich, imaginative, mythological traditions of the past. Um, it's reminding me, Carolyn, of the balance right now between the Saturn and Capricorn energy and Jupiter and Sagittarius. <laughs> and so there's this part of us that's being reminded to really focus on, on those mundane aspects of reality, on becoming more responsible adulting, so to speak. 
And then there's this part that's encouraging us to dream and encouraging us to, to really look ahead and see what's possible and start to bring that into our reality. So I love what you're saying. It's also the balance between the mass, the more masculine qualities and the more feminine qualities. And again, we, we tend to undervalue the feminine, like you're saying, the feminine moments of just introspection and quiet. And how do you do that in reality though? I find it very challenging because (laughs) there really are so many demands on our time. Mm -hmm. And so do you say no to parties? Do you like, how do you actually do that in your life? So, uh, well, so I try to simplify my shopping. I try to get it done throughout the year, ordering things from Etsy that I know my friends will like, stuff like that. Um, I try to, um, yeah, only go to parties with people that are the most important to me. Um, And of course, I'm blessed because I work from home, so I don't have to go out to a job. But um, just taking whatever time we can find to cuddle up with a blanket on the couch, um, get a good book and a hot cup of tea, (laughs) and really, really let let the activity die down. At least, also for me, it's a little bit, you know, I struggle with um, uh, seasonal downswings, I guess, and not nearly as bad as I used to, but my energy just won't let me be go, 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 go (laughs) in the, in the holiday. So it's like um, really trying to work with that instead of against it. And, you know, I still, there's still lots of things to make happen. And I still always throw a big winter solstice party every year. But, you know, there's things that can be done to simplify that, like have it be a potluck instead of doing it all yourself. Have the kind of friends that will stick around and clean it up for you. (laughs) That's, (laughs) those are good things to do. Tell us like how you structure your reality so that you can curl up with that book more often. Well, you know, it might sound kind of mundane, but turn off the television. (laughs) It's really easy to be exhausted at night and turn on Netflix and then just have it play the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And all of a sudden, half of your evening is over. And if you turn off the television at like six o'clock and you have four hours, that four hours goes so much more slowly. If you have that tea and a book that you're reading and all of a sudden time becomes expansive. And so I say, Give yourself the gift of time by turning off all the myriad things that beep and buzz and make noise in your environment and just discover that silence is a gift of its own. Oh, that's so beautiful, Donna. You're making me realize what a Netflix addict I am. <laughs> but it's so true. It, it does pass much more slowly and beautifully with a book. But you also brought up a good point earlier, Carolyn, about connecting to that mythological element of life. So for you, it might, might be really inspiring to watch those, the Netflix shows and just to keep going. You know, it's a little bit embarrassing, but some of the biggest creative ideas I've ever had in my life have come directly out of Game of Thrones marathons. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I completely agree with you. I would not want someone to take, to take my occasional binge watching away, but well, you're doing them that way with intention. You're intending to have that transformative experience through submerging yourself into an, uh, an alternate world mm-hmm. or a world of imagination. And then it's, then it's being used for fueling your soul rather than distracting yourself from your soul. And, and I know you know what I mean. I know you both know what I mean, that there's a big difference between the two of them. Truly. All right, you magical women. Let's talk about some tangible ritual ideas that people can do to connect in with the magic of the solstice this year? This year's solstice, astrological energies are extremely potent, much more potent than I've seen in a number of years. And the reason is because, well, every solstice means that the sun is moving into the sign of Capricorn. This year, a few hours before the solstice, the planet Mercury, which has to do with writing and um, bringing, crossing between the worlds, is meeting the planet Jupiter in Sagittarius. And so, and, the, and Jupiter has to do with dreaming and how we transcend ourselves. And so there's this, this, this opening for not only dream work, but everything that unites writing 
and bringing information from other worlds. So channeling and things right before the moment of the solstice. And then right after the moment of solstice, we have the full moon in Cancer. And the full moon loves being in the sign of Cancer. It's it's, it's, it's its home. It's the watery opening where we touch the essence of the mother in its, in its water form. And so the fact that these are both happening, bookending the moment of the greatest darkness, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of setting the inside the entire day from about one o'clock in the afternoon on for my own private rituals to see where they lead. I love what you mentioned about the time right before the solstice being ripe for channeling. One of my friends is an amazing channeler, and I had already been having a plan that people, the first guests at my party would be doing, <clears throat> that we'd be doing tarot readings for each other before the fire. But now I'm like, well, we need the tarot readings, plus we need to get out the Ouija board, and we need to have Crystal open the channel to the other side, see if we can get Alistair Crowley this time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that will be fantastic. And then, so that's what I like to do pretty much always is have some form of group divination fun and then gather everyone around the fire, sing songs. Um, and we usually we write down on pieces of paper, our hopes and our wishes for the coming year. And we share our gratitudes for the year that's just passed. And we put the little slips of paper in the fire, usually with an offering of some tobacco, and just go around and share. And it's very simple, but it's the kind of thing that can unite people. Um, you know, anybody from any religious tradition in a group of friends wouldn't feel alienated by something like that. When I was a kid, I used to be very lucky to get to go to these big, elaborate <clears throat> winter solstice druid rituals that happened in town. And I'm, they were so lovely, but I haven't been able to replicate anything like that. <laughs> um, that's when you get a priest and a priestess and the robes and the whole get up. Um, I've been more, <laughs> I've been less ambitious in my winter solstice ritualing. Carolyn, I want to go to your party. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the most fun. Um, and such a beautiful way to celebrate. And Donna, your quiet evening with this ritual that's just going to unfold and you're going to see where it takes you is equally beautiful. So lots of great ideas for people. Carolyn, you've dedicated, well, actually both of you on some level have dedicated so much of your lives to bringing magic back you know, for, for people and for, to help people reconnect with that magic. Why do you feel that's so important? Donna? I feel very lucky that for as long as I can remember, it's like there's a sparkle in the air and every breath is filled with something alive and shimmering. And when I allow it to penetrate who I am, it sustains me from day to day, even when the days are really hard. And it's such a gift. I, I wish that gift for other people because I recognize that life would be so much easier for, well, them and, well, for me, because I'm around them. And um, you know, maybe that's a little bit selfish that I want everybody to be happy because I will feel it if they're happy and then we'll all be happy together. I love that, Donna. Thank you so much. Go ahead, Carolyn. That sounds just about right to me about happiness. Um, so when I think about magic, one of the definitions that I use for it is that it's active participation in synchronicity. So instead of just passively observing a synchronicity like, oh, you know, I dreamt about caterpillars last night and today I saw all these butterflies, instead of just noticing, um, you know, in doing magic, uh, we, we take a concentration of meaning, we, we create a concentration of meaning. Like, for example, in astrological or planetary magic, if you're doing a ritual for the sun, um, you would, you know, have an orange, you'd have some resin incense, you'd have music, chanting for the sun, and gold candles, so on. And you would create this density um, of associations then for the universe to rhyme with poetically. So you would be starting off a sequence of synchronicities by first generating this density. So, um, so without magic, you know, our culture is very into um, t 
taking away the joy and the wonder from everything and, you know, claiming that we just live in this world of dead material objects that we can just exploit for whatever purpose. And that is immensely depressing. Like, it's no wonder to me that there's such high rates of depression in our society. Um, so, you know, taking the time to do this kind of introspective work and to, do, to gather friends together and do ritual work, to richly saturate your life um, with magic and mythology and astrology, um, gives you that active participation in synchronicity, which allows you to experience more and more meaning, more and more coherence in your daily life. And that really is the foundation of, of beauty. I love that, you guys. Um, the word that comes to mind for me in working with magic is the word delightful. Mm -hmm. It brings this level of delight back into our day-to-day -day reality. The, the other night I had to... I, I had a tight deadline on a script that I needed to write for our moon magic, our course, our online course. And I was so unhappy with the way that we talk about the course before that I was like, I need to write, I need to write something new and, and, and it needs to really reflect the beauty of this course. But I had a tight, tight deadline to do it because the video shoot was the next day. Anyways, I went to bed saying, moon, can you please help me write this? Can you just please tell me what to, to write and how to communicate the beauty of working with you. And I said, please send it to me in a dream. Didn't come in a dream. At two o'clock in the morning, I shot awake. And from two to four, it streamed out of me so easily. And Donna said, well, of course, of course it didn't come in a dream because you needed to write it down. I was like, oh yeah, that's true. But you know, it was just such a, a delightful event. It's like, wow, I'm not alone. There, is, there are allies. We just have to reach out. We just have to ask. We just have to acknowledge. We have to bring that level of awareness to our reality. And when we do, like Donna said, things get easier, you know, and, and it's, we don't have to work so hard. You know, I think in the past I would have like just tried to write something because I had to and it wouldn't have been good and, it, you know, and I wouldn't have had any fun doing it. But instead I got to have this delightful experience. Mm. So... Yeah, I mean, I love that you two um, really focus on that in your work and really help make that accessible for more and more people. Because like you said, Donna, our world will be better when people connect in with that. It puts the exclamation point on the fact that there is meaning here. There is connection. And when you're connected to that, that wonder, that delight, that magic, um, you're connected on a heart level and a soul level with the people around you and everything around you. And so, yes, you'll still have differences. You'll still have diversity, which is glorious, but you can be okay with it being glorious because you know you're still connected. And it's not about me versus them anymore. It's, be, it's me and them having this amazing dance because you feel, you feel that connection. You can't doubt it. So, ladies... What would you like to say to the audience for the winter solstice? Like what, what would be some parting words that you'd like to leave them with that they can bring into whatever ritual they do, whatever celebration they do, whatever internal reflection they do? What would you like to add to that? I'd like to echo what um, Carolyn said earlier, that this is the time you plant the seeds that you're going to carry into next year. And next year is going to start off like a rocket. So, um, while you have the opportunity, um, take the time to go through that stock of seeds and decide what you want to plant now and plant them in the darkness and let, and let them have that fallow time to sit before they sprout very quickly in the new year. Mm, lovely. So what I would say, um, I, I recommend trying out a celebration of the winter solstice that's in the Elizabethan spirit. So in Elizabethan England, when they celebrated the 12 days of Christmas, it was a time of immense silliness and bawdiness, and everybody played games like blind man's bluff and chased each other around with sticks and, uh, you know, ate eight tons of marzipan and they would put the youngest people in charge of the household and make them the king and the queen and follow their orders. 
And, you know, that kind of festival reversal and that sort of spirit of creating a temporary other world in which to experience everything is topsy-turvy, um, I think is a wonderful thing to experiment with and it's made my life a lot richer for the season. So that's what I want to wish to all of you as a kind of Elizabethan winter solstice this year. Oh my gosh. Delightful indeed. I love it. The idea of putting the kids in charge of the house, I already know where that's going. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Thank you, I'm, both of you. I'm Donna. We're, we do this together and it's just great. I love when I get to ask you the questions about um, the ma magic and the solstice and the astrology of it all. So thank you so much for sharing. And Carolyn, as always, it is such a pleasure to feature you and your work here at Astrology Hub. Thank you so much. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed that and that you received some ideas you can use to bring more purpose into your life around the holidays and really every day. <laughs> and I really feel like everything we talked about, like we mentioned before, is the antidote or the medicine for all of you out there who are feeling really disconnected from the holiday season and who maybe even find the way we're doing the holidays in our modern times a bit repulsive. Um, this is really just an invitation to make it yours to infuse that meaning and purpose and connect with the inner light that's inside of you, no matter how dark things may seem in your life or in the world right now. So make sure you tune in next week as Donna and I will be shifting the focus to 2019. The forecast we'll be releasing on Monday, December 24th, will be a really special one focused on not just that week, but also giving you a glimpse into the year ahead. So giving you a glimpse into 2019. And on Thursday, December 27th, Donna and I are going to lay out some really simple step-by-step -step processes you can use to set your goals and intentions for 2019, taking into account all the important aspects of life that are going to be very important for you to focus on as we prepare for 2020, which is really the crescendo of energy that 2019 is leading toward. So there's some really important aspects of life that we can we can focus on, we can create intentions around, we can create goals around so that we're ready for 2020, which is going to be a huge year for all of us. So that's just another example of ways that you can use the practical wisdom of astrology to live your life on purpose. All right. So if you like this episode and you're enjoying this podcast, please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to it and share it with other paradigm shifters out there just like you. Sending you so much love and a happy winter solstice and full moon. And thanks so much for tuning in. Hi there, this is Amanda, and I am so excited to invite you to an epic event that will help you kick off your new year with everything you need to know to make it your best year yet. Join Astrology Hub for our fourth annual free New Year Forecast Marathon. I've invited 12 of my favorite astrologers to clue you into the major themes of 2019 and help you identify the opportunities and challenges as we embark on this new year. The event is happening online over three days in January, and you can find more information and reserve your free spot by going to astrologyhub.com slash forecast and entering your name and email now. When you register, you'll also get a beautiful planning calendar for every lunar cycle of 2019. You can print it out and have it with you during the event for note-taking so you don't forget a thing as the year goes on. We'll only send the replay to those of you who register. So make sure and put your name on the list now. Go to astrologyhub.com slash forecast and reserve your free spot today. That's astrologyhub.com slash forecast. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Astrology Hub podcast. We can't wait to continue exploring with you and bringing you astrology's most practical wisdom so you can live your life on purpose. We'll catch you on the next episode. Hi, this is Chris Kaplan, the producer of the Astrology Hub podcast. This episode is over, but check the show notes for links to products and services you've heard about during this episode. And if you enjoyed our show, please subscribe and rate using the subscribe button wherever you listen to your podcasts.